Hi everyone, I'm Conway the Turtle, bringing you a very special episode of Turtle Time. My long-awaited, promised, furry film review. So now this will be an ongoing thing, and where I will review films, aka movies, is that feature an animal or a character with animal-like traits in the main cast. If there is no animals or animal-like char characters with animal-like traits in the main cast, sorry, it doesn't count for me. That means that some movies are a question. All films I review will be told from my personal perspective, aka third party. And at the end of each review, I shall tell you if I think it, the film is brilliant or deserves, deserves to get slapped in the face by a fish. Feel free to at any time submit a movie that features an animal or a character with animal-like traits in the main cast using hashtag film review in the comments below. Okay, ready? Let's get the show started. For today's film, I have decided not to do The Lion King or Zootopia for my first film review because those are just too easy at pitching the efforts for furry film. The film I have decided to do is the 2000 film from the House of Mouse itself, The Emperor's New Groove. So we open up up in the middle of a jungle during a rainstorm, where we see a llama. A very sad looking llama to be precise. The narrator comes on and we find out that this guy is the main character. So ha! There's my furry element right there. Not only is he the main character, but he is the emperor of this whole kingdom. Or empire to be precise. And his name is Cusco. So he takes us back, back to the beginning in what that led up to him becoming a llama. Of course he goes a little too far and ends up taking us back to his when he was a baby. Yes, he was cute. I admit that. 90% babies are cute. Anyways. So we fast forward from that point to when he's 17 years old. Almost 18, and we click click the him where he cues up the catchy theme song of his. And seriously, if this if this catchy theme song is going on, we get a glimpse of his personality. Pretty much a selfish brat. While he is just moving and grooving to its home, he ends up bumping into an old guy, who accidentally throws him off his groove. Kuzco, in his kind and generous nature, has the old man thrown out the building. I don't mean one or two floors, I mean this is at least three stories. Goes back and goes about the rest of the day. Cut to outside, is where we see the counterpoint of the film, Pacha, the village leader, coming in because he has received a summon from Cusco. Pacha finds the old man that Cusco threw out the window, finds the old man tangled up in the banner that Cusco threw out the window. Pacha helps him down before heading back inside to meet up with Cusco. Cut back inside and we meet the villainous of, of the film, Yzma and her right hand man Karunk. Now, Yzma has been described multiple times throughout the film as extremely old and scary beyond all words. And quite frankly, I believe them. I don't want to find her in the middle of a dark alley. And to describe Kronk, he has about as much intelligence as a sack of bricks. And it's about you know, the same as, as them as well. So, big, strong, but dumb. Anyways, Yzma, uh, that is holding meetings with the town folk you know, and being the taking on the role of the empress, even though she's just the advisor. Cusco finds her doing this and proceeds to fire her. 
He received the message that Pacha has arrived. It's the Pacha goes and meets Pacha. Talks with Pacha a bit about him having a problem and hearing that Pacha has the best advice. So, Cusco takes Pacha over to a model of Pacha's village and asks Pacha where is the best place to find some sun. Pacha tells him where it would be located and Cusco reveals that he's planning to build a theme park for himself, including a water slide, of course, as a birthday present, right where Pacha's house is. I mean, insult to injury, right? Well, yeah. Pacha doesn't take kindly to this. To this. And then, Cusco has him storm out. This time through the front door. Well, Cusco was kind of was kinder this time around, right? Meanwhile, back with Yzma and Kronk, Yzma's destroying stone busts of Cusco. And for those of you who don't know what a bust is, it is a, a stone statue from the neck up. Well, from shoulders up, really. While Yzma and Kronk is... While Yzma is destroying the stone bust, Kronk accidentally lets slip about her, her doing this bear than if she actually tried to kill the Emperor. Yzma has a brilliant plan and decides to go to her secret lab, which everyone apparently knows about, and then goes on having Kronk pull the lever, first time being the wrong lever, leading her into a alligator infested trap, and going on the roller coaster of evil. Then Yzma and Kronk ends up in their lab, where Yzma had the plan to turn Ke Cusco into a bug, put him into a series of boxes, ship him to herself, and then smash the boxes. Before she found herself on just poisoning, poisoning the guy. So, she has Kronk invite Cusco for dinner. Their time rolled around, and Kronk and Yzma are prepping for everything. Kronk is even making his famous finish puffs. They do look good, mind you. Kuzco shows up, they have some small talk. Kronk um, goes to get Kuzco's poison drink, but then realizes he left his finish puffs in the oven. And he goes off to rescue them, while Kuzco needs to talk some more. Kronk brings back his finish puffs, forgetting which cup is Kuzco's, because they all look the same and up mixing the drinks all together. They give Cusco his drink and it knocks him out, turning him into a llama. Cusco quickly wakes back up because this is uh, apparently a very fast nap. And only for Kronk to knock Cusco out with the tray again under even the order. She then orders Kronk to take Cusco and dispose, dispose of him. But before, but before that, they need to have dessert and coffee. Because there's always time for dessert. Always. Hey, can you get rid of the body? Have some dessert first. Kronk goes down and he pulls a terrible uh, Mission Impossible all stunt. And finding he, this, throwing Cusco into a river which led to a massive waterfall before he had a moment of morality, where the, which is shown by the angel and demon on the shoulder. So as the two the inner Kronks are arguing, Kronk tells them to be gone and decides to do the right thing and save Cusco. Now Kronk doesn't know what to do. While trying to figure it out while and panicking, he ends up tripping and tossing Cusco down some stairs, which ends up landing. Who then proceeds to land on top of a, a cart belonging to one Pacha. Pacha leaves the city and back to his village.
Once back, we meet Pacha's family, and Pacha goes down memory lane, and while thinking there's nothing he can do to protect his family, he is from Cusco, uh, coming by to build a summer home there. While Pacha goes to put away the car, he finds Cusco, whom he just sees as a llama. When Cusco starts talking, Pacha of course thinks it's a demon llama before realizing Hey, wait, this is the Emperor. Cusco thinks Pacha did it. Cusco thinks that Pacha turned him into a llama and plans to go to Yzma to her secret lab. I'm not kidding, he actually does this in the movie. We turn back into human. Pacha uh, demands that, that Cusco build his summer home somewhere else. Kuzco gets mad and goes off on his own into the jungle, where he quickly runs into a squirrel, uh, whom he proceeds to make fun of. Kuzco ends up slipping down a hill into a big group of panthers who are thankfully all asleep. That same squirrel comes by, takes out a balloon, loads it up, and puts it into a shape of a llama. Where did a squirrel get a balloon? During this era, I don't know. This is Disney people. And after he blows up the llama balloon, he pops it. Thankfully, every all the cats are still asleep. Cusco uh, exclaims in joy, which wakes up every single panther. Cusco being chased by the cats, and ends up on a cliff, where out of nowhere. Pacha comes swinging on in on a vine, R than yell and everything. Grabs Cusco on the way back to safety, they end up nagging on a big old log. With the vine ends up wrapping around them multiple times. Seriously, I wouldn't know how long that vine was if it could do that. <laughs> and the log breaks, goes tumbling down the cliff into the rapids below. Where Cusco and Pacha then proceed to get slammed by the rock. After all that, they think they're safe. I want you to realize waterfall. Did the waterfall count? Is there a waterfall coming? Yep. Sharp pointy rocks at the bottom, most likely. Bring it on. <laughs> and I was just paraphrasing things that, but that was a line from the film. So they go over the waterfall. Cusco knocked out gold. Pacha drags him to the land and then proceeds to attempt to give him mouth to mouth. I don't know about you, but I do not want to give a llama. Maybe a, a llama, someone with a llama per, persona? But that's about it. So Cusco wakes up. Pacha tries to get a fire started for them. Cusco puts out the fire three times and, and Pacha gets it going each and every time. Which appears to be the same wood each and every time. I don't know about you, but it's the fact that he can get that fire going not one, two, or three times, but four times with the same wood that's been drenched three times is impressive. Cusco goes to sleep off by himself. Pacha sees him. Cusco is cold in the middle of the night, so he gives him his poncho. Cusco sees it and he decides to do something different. He talks to Pacha in the morning, saying that he will not be building his home where Pacha says, but having his hooks crossed behind his back. I'm not sure how that works. Can anyone explain how you can cross a hook? They quickly come across a bridge. And this thing is a rickety old wooden rope bridge. After a crossing, Pacha falls through it, thankfully snaking on the vine. Cusco revealed that he was planning to betray Pacha uh, after they got back to the palace and throw Pacha into the dungeon while he builds his home, his summer getaway where Pacha's house is. Pacha is, of course, mad at this. Cusco quickly falls through again, uh, the same wooden bridge. And Pacha and Cusco have a fight. After fighting, the bridge collapses totally. 
Kutka and Pasha go tumbling down on the cliff again. This time, I'm snagging where it narrowed. They get the idea to hook arms and walk up the cliff back to back. They make it a fair amount of way before the cliff widens away from us. Pacha attempts to grab a branch, a low lane branch, and that's hanging off the cliff. He has an attempt to He'll climb up a bit more. Kuko support him. When Pacha's shaking the branch, a ton of scorpions fall out of this thing. I mean, seriously, there's a lot of scorpions. How did, why were they all in that one branch? I don't know. So they all proceed to climb down Pacha's shirt. Pacha's panicking, ends up having Kuzco flip and fall face first into a, a small cave in the cliff, which is filled with a lot, a lot of bats. The bats proceed to fill up Cusco's mouth like a water hose. So between the scorpions and the bats, Pacha and Cusco have enough momentum somehow to make it to the top of the cliff. That's using a massive swing effect. As the cliff goes tum tumbles down with Pacha on it, Cusco reaches out in his split second, grabs Pacha by his shirt, and pulls him to safety. Pacha points out that Kuzco just saved him, and Kuzco was reply was, I wasn't going to let you just die, no one's that evil, turning, using the very words that Pacha used on him earlier. So they go the long way around, stopping at a restaurant, where Kuzco has to dress up in Pacha's hat and poncho, to pretend he's his wife. When Cusco uh, goes back to the kitchen to ask for some to talk to the chef, Eve Man Kronk, who was revealed uh, that Cusco, who had revealed that Cusco was alive to Isma, are hunting him down to finish the job. Pacha goes to try to warn Cusco. Kuzco doesn't believe him. And, and goes back. Kuzco proceeds to uh, go back to his day. Meanwhile, Kronk went back to the kitchen. And, through certain circumstances, ends up being the chef for the day. I mean, I think he missed his calling. He should have been a cook, honestly. See, not a palace guard. Under Yzma. Anyway, Pacha tells the staff of the restaurant that it's Yzma's birthday and uh, attempts to distract her so that they could escape. They thankfully do. So, and then, after Cusco and Pacha are running away, hey, Cusco asks what's up, and Pacha describes that. These two guys were after him. And Isma Cusco asked him to describe him, and he described Isma and Kronk perfectly. He thinks they came to rescue him. Pacha tries to convince Cusco that they are in fact trying to kill him. He doesn't believe him. They have a fight and split up. As Cusco goes to say hi to Isma and Kronk, he overhears that they were in fact trying to kill him, and he realized Pacha was right all along. Cusco's being very bad, go back to where we left open the movie with, and from there, go to the field filled, filled with llamas. There he meets Pacha again, they make up, and head to Pacha's home to get some supplies. And on the way to his house, they hear that Yzma and Kronk have somehow uh, made it to his home, and are essentially holding his family hostage. Well, not really, wasn't a hostage. Pacha uh, warns his wife, and she tells Pacha and Cusco to go. They'll hold them, hold Kronk and Isma off, and they proceed to do so hilariously. Alright. So, 
Pacha and Kuko have a head start, queuing up the chasing. And with little red dots on Kuko and Pacha's trail. Yzma and Kronk get back on trail and somehow look down, seeing the red dots. Looking behind themselves, they see the purple dots fall by their trail. Okay, these weren't dots, but work with me here, people. Kuko and Pacha uh, makes it back to the palace, activates the lever, and goes down the roller coaster of evil. Ends up in Yzma's lab, where they attempt to find the potion that will turn Kuko human again. Only to find out Yzma and Kronk has somehow beaten them to the secret lab. When asked this question, and to Yzma and Kronk, even they don't know how they did it. And Yzma tells Kronk to finish Kuzco, and Kronk has a moral dilemma again with the angel and demon popping up. As he's arguing with himself, well, Yzma finally has enough with him, and tells Kronk that He's fired, and she never liked his finish club. I mean, low blows. Low blows. Trump tries to tr up a chandelier on it. Yzma, only to fail. Because Yzma standing in the one spot where the chandelier will fall around her, but not be her arm bright. Yzma proceeds to drop Trump down the pit, and calls the guards. In an effort to get away from the guards, and get the potion that will turn Utsuko human again. They drop the potion counter, turning all the guards into animals. One of the guards who returned in a cow has to be left, left to go home early. Yzma agrees to this. And then we queue up the awesome battle sequence. Okay, it's not really awesome. Utsuko was trying all kinds of potions. And potions that turn him into a turtle, whale, parakeet, yeah. <laughs> Eventually, it's just Yzma, Kuzco, and Pacha, with two potions left. They're trapped outside the building now, on the cliff, on the wall. Yzma takes a potion and gets transformed into a cute little kitty. <coughs> exactly. Revealing that she has the last potion, the human potion in her paw. Thinking that she's going to drop it, and destroy Kuzco's chance to become human again. She feels that she was planning to turn herself into human again. And, and then kills Kuzco. So Pacha and Yzma all fight it out. The potion falls down. Um, and it's up to Kuzco and, Kron and Pacha to grab it. Arms once again, back to back, and climb up the wall. Gets the potion. And, and Kuzco becomes human again. Cut to after. Kuzco is apologizing to the old man from earlier in the movie and sees Pacha all sad because he thinks Kuzco still going back to his home right on his hill. Kuzco has a change of heart at this point and, and tells Pacha he's not going to build his home there because he doesn't get enough sun and those hills weren't saving. Pacha reveals that there's a hill next door to his that might fit Kuzco's criteria. Fast forward a few months. Kuzco has a summer home um, right next to Pacha. Pacha and Kuzco is having a fun time. And a movie. The movie ends. We see, at the end, we see Kronk leading the Squirrel Scouts, teaching in the kids who includes Miss Pacha's son and daughter. Or how to speak squirrel. Dorian Green would be so proud of him. If you don't know who she is, look her up, people. Oh, and Yzma, still in cat form, as part of as the scouts as well. Movie ends. This time for real. Alright guys, that's how the Emperor's New Groove ends. Once again, if you feel like you have a movie that you would love me to review, that features an animal or animal-like character in the main cast. Feel free to include it in the comments below with hashtag for film review. If you like what you saw and want more, subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Hit that bell for notifications for when my next video airs. Leave a like or maybe a comment and I hope 
to see you all next time. Johnny. Hey guys, Comet Turtle here. Here. It has come to my attention that I forgot to include my opinion at the end of this video of the movie. So, in my opinion, the Emperor's New Groove is brilliant. If you guys agree with me or disagree and think I should get slapped in the face by a fish, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, it's I hope to see you all next time. Johnny.